So if you're dealing with SIBO or SIFO or really any type of overgrowth in the digestive tract, I want to make this quick video to share a probiotic test that we do with our clients to get an idea. Have we done enough steps to improve the situation? Here we go. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving anybody medical advice here. And this test that we're going to talk about is certainly not any type of diagnostic situation in any way. We're just going to talk about some simple tests that we could do at home to get an idea, have we created enough improvement? And when someone has some type of overgrowth in the digestive tract, they're usually going to have some type of symptoms going on. And what's really interesting and kind of what drew us to this test to kind of do with our clients was that a lot of people, when they use probiotics, they hear, oh man, you got to use probiotics. Probiotics are going to fix all these issues for you. But when they use probiotics, they feel a whole lot worse. So we need to understand why would those symptoms get worse for some individuals and some individuals see so much improvement when supplementing with probiotics. So one thing to think about is, you know, when we have some type of overgrowth here in the digestive tract, where that overgrowth is taking place can sometimes dictate what type of symptoms or when those symptoms will occur according to when a person eats or when they're not eating, etc. So, you know, you can have H. pylori infection or some type of bacterial issue going on in the stomach. We hear a lot about SIBO, which is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or CFO, which is a fungal overgrowth, and that happens here in the small intestine. And then we hear about dysbiosis issues in the large intestine, which is really where our good gut flora should be, in this large intestine. But when there's a lot of bad guys in there that have kind of taken over the camp and they're just causing all this havoc, that's called a dysbiosis. So that can vary, but when someone puts a probiotic into the system, they're putting in these good guys to go down here and set up camp here in the large intestine and be that good gut flora that helps us you know, digest our food and helps our immune system function, all those things that good gut flora can do. But when somebody puts some probiotics in here, if there's really a bunch of bad guys somewhere in this system, then putting those good guys in there can almost create like this battle between the good guys and the bad guys, which can really magnify a lot of the symptoms that someone would experience, you know, like bloating or cramping or constipation or even diarrhea or nausea, all these things that can go on with those digestive symptoms can really be magnified when someone starts putting probiotics in there. So it can be about that battle going on. Some people might experience some other symptoms getting magnified if they're dealing with some type of you know lactic acid issue going on. Some types of bacteria can create that delactate that can raise the lactic acid levels in the system that can create some symptoms like brain fog and some other things that someone might deal with. But when we're talking about the digestive symptoms being magnified, it's usually about this battle going on. So what we like to see clients do before they start supplementing with probiotics or trying to eat a bunch of fermented food is take steps to bring that overgrowth down a little bit. And there's lots of steps that we can take and I'll point you to a video where we talk about a lot of those um, at the end of this video, but we want to reduce that overgrowth. And then when we put the probiotics in there, you're not going to have that big battle and that huge magnification of symptoms. The problem is a lot of people will take probiotics, they'll feel much worse and they're like, well, that's not for me. That certainly didn't help me. That made me worse. I'm not going to do that again. And they never get the benefits that can come from reestablishing a good gut flora. They might take some kind of antibiotic and wipe out everything that's in the system, but they never really take the steps to replenish that good gut flora because they tried probiotics before and it made them worse. So they're like, hey, I ain't doing that. So we like to see people reduce the overgrowth and then we do what's called a test usage of the probiotics. So all we do is when we're taking any type of steps to reduce an overgrowth, whether it's like D-limonene or mastic gum or some type of natural antimicrobial agent, when we feel like we've created an improvement in our symptoms and we've also taken the steps to improve any digestive malfunctions like we talk about doing in almost every video that we have, you know, improving any kind of low stomach acid issue or poor bile flow issues. Once someone is taking steps to do those, then we implement this probiotic test. So if we're using antimicrobials, we'll stop those on one day and then the next morning, 
we'll take one of a specific probiotic that we use. And the one that we use has uh, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, Lactobacillus pericacea, Lactobacillus casea, and Lactobacillus gasseri, along with some prebiotic fibers in there as well. And we'll put a link in the description below to the probiotic that we use for this test. I'm not saying you need to use that one. I don't think that you do, but if you can find uh, a formula that has you know, at least most of those, then you should be able to do a similar test and see similar results. But I'll put that link below just so you can look at the ingredients and kind of get an idea of what's going on. But so what we do is we take one of these first thing in the morning, the day after we've stopped any of our efforts to wipe out the bad guys. And if the person receives a lot of discomfort, you know, after taking that, and it could take 30, 60, 90 minutes or more for that discomfort to show up. But if there's a real magnification of symptoms or discomfort, the person is usually really going to notice it. So if they have a lot of discomfort, then we know, okay, we have not done enough work yet. We wanna do more work to wipe out these bad guys for a little while longer, and when more symptoms improve, we can test this out again. Now, if they do okay with one capsule of this probiotic first thing in the morning, then the next morning, we wanna try two capsules. And does two capsules create any discomfort? There's a lot more good guys going in now, right? It could create a bigger battle if there's still a lot of bad guys in there, so we wanna test out two capsules. Now, if that creates discomfort, then that's another sign. Okay, we need to do more work. We'll come back and test this out maybe three, four, six weeks later. But if a person does fine with those two capsules, then that's a sign. It's not a diagnostic thing. It's just a sign that they've done enough steps to at least reduce that overgrowth down to a point to where when the good guys go in, it's not gonna create a lot of magnification of symptoms. So then what we have them do is just continue to use that probiotic two each morning, first thing in the morning, or maybe right before they go to bed. We just like to do it on an empty stomach. And they will continue to do that for two or three months. Most of the studies suggest that replenishing that good gut flora for two to three months is usually beneficial. And we'll put some links in the description below to some of these studies that talk about how some of these symptoms can be magnified when you put probiotics in for some folks. Now, another scenario that's common to see with clients is maybe they'll take that one capsule first thing in the morning and then they'll have a little bit of discomfort. Like they can feel that there's a magnification there, but it's not so severe. So the next day they go to two capsules and they're like, yeah, it feels like it's a little bit more, but it's really not debilitating or anything. I feel like I can kind of keep going and see what happens. So that's a judgment call that a person can take because with a lot of these folks, if they just continue using that probiotic after a few days, it just starts to improve because the good guys are starting to take over. So maybe a person can just kind of see, well, I'll, I'm going to do it for three, four or five days and see, does it seem to be getting better or does it seem to be getting worse, indicating that I really need to go back and take more steps to wipe out these bad guys. So what we like to do again is we don't want somebody to start taking probiotics just to see is there going to be a horrible response or not. We like to see people take steps to reduce that overgrowth so when they put the probiotics in, they're not creating a whole bunch of magnifications to their symptoms. So if the test goes great, they can use these for a few months, probably also include some fermented foods, maybe even another broad spectrum probiotic formula to get a variety of different you know, strains in that good gut flora going in. Now, if you're just experiencing a lot of digestive symptoms, you're not even sure what's going on, maybe you're new to this channel, we'll put a link in the description below for our totally free digestion course that'll walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion may not be working right for you and steps you can take to improve those. But for now, if you wanna learn more about those steps that we take to reduce an overgrowth, you can jump over and check out our video on how to fix SIBO fast or our video on how to wipe out bad bacteria in the stomach. I can't wait to hear about your results.